Are you camera shaking? No. I'm just not a camera person. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about um, what happened at my genetics appointment. So my genetics appointment was actually yesterday and today I filmed the um, my consultation with my radiation doctor and we're going to go over what the genetics, how the genetics appointment went. I brought him because I had no idea well, I knew what somewhat, but there's some things that I was kind of like a little lost on what they were, the doctor was explaining. Um, so I'm just gonna kind of go over a little bit and then he's gonna explain a little bit more about what they're gonna do and why they're gonna do it. So we're first gonna explain what what is genetics. So what is genetics and why do they use genetics on cancer patients? Why, I, that was the whole question about why do they use genetics and why did I have to get that done? So because she's so young it's kind of raises a red flag uh, most cancers or cancers are usually broken into in three ways and mind you this is information i got from the geneticist and uh, doing a little bit of my own research cancers are either sporadic most of cancers i think up to 80 percent uh, don't quote me on that but i think it's about 80 percent of cancers are sporadic they just random mutations in the body they just happen randomly just because they don't know why. you know it's a a process failure in certain genes or certain cells that create malignancies. Other cancers, small percentage are caused either by familial or hereditary reasons. Um, and that's just either mutations in the genes that are passed on from you know family members, whether it's your mother's side or your father's side or both sides, or you know something in your bloodline or certain mutations in your cells or your DNA structure that causes you to be at a higher, basically be. And we were, and then we were there for like two hours. So the, the, like we were there for, I'm going to say about two hours. And she just asked me about basically every, any, anybody in my family. Um, she asked me about my mom, my dad, um, if they've had cancer, my mom, as you guys may know, um, she did pass from esophageal cancer. So we went off, like my aunts, my uncles, cousins, we went through the entire family tree to make sure, you know, if, to see if there was anything that she could correlate with this. That's technically what she's there for, is to figure out the why. So that's basically her main job, is to kind of figure out the why, as to, you know, how come she's getting cancer. Another reason is because, again, because she is so young and colon cancer should actually be really rare for her, given her age and her, her race as well as her gender. It's mostly found in guys, um, older males. You know, she wants to figure out, well, why is it happening? What's causing it? Is it a gene mutation? Because, for example, there's a syndrome called uh, Lynch syndrome. In your DNA, it basically predisposes you to develop uh, colorectal cancer at a higher rate than, say, your average person. And also predisposes you to develop other cancers. So let's say she does have that syndrome, for example. Um, and you know she's a, at a really high rate of developing colon cancer. Then she's also had she also has a higher rate of developing, let's say, uterine cancer or um, lung cancer, or breast cancer. So if she does, they want to take preventative measures to you know remove those organs if they can in order for her to uh, eliminate the risk of developing those cancers at a later date in the future so that's the whole reason kind of for genetics testing is basically it's uh it's it's preventative medicine in a sense because if she does have one of those genetic disorders then they're able to treat it now then wait for that cancer to develop down the road um, based on the statistical probability of her developing those cancers. Now with Lynch syndrome, for example, I think it's like 80 to 90 percent chance of developing colorectal cancer under, you know, before you reach the age of 30. Um, you know, same thing, there's also a percentage for breast cancer or what have you. So if those chances are also high, then they'll go ahead and, you know, and do a mastectomy, for example, or a hysterectomy to eliminate those chances of developing cancer. Um, so that's the biggest reason is, you know, is this just sporadic? It may very well be just random error, you know, and her cells just are attacking her own body. Um, but it could also have a root cause or it could, you know, be a, a DNA uh, mutation or, you know, her DNA is 
missing a protein or there's something wrong and you know you're able to identify the genes and whatnot um, another reason they'll kind of do genetic testing is not only on her but they also do it on the tumor because let's say depending on the stage of cancer um, they can do genetic testing on the tumor and then uh, there's also a targeted therapy which is basically they're able to uh, offer her therapy that basically targets the tumor uh, cells and not so much her healthy cells so the side effects and the what's, symptoms what's the difference between the chemotherapy and the targeted chemotherapy is basically it's going to wipe out all your cells healthy and malignant cells in general it's basically like broad spectrum uh, you know it it, it it can't tell good cells from bad cells essentially so you that's why you lose hair follicles and your hair falls out um, and your white blood cell count decreases and you know you feel super fatigued and then you have all a laundry list of symptoms because it's just killing cells in general healthy not healthy and how would they do the targeted how do they targeted is more targeted therapy is more they're targeting the actual cells that are causing the issue that are causing the cancer so now they'll obviously be collateral damage and you know some healthy cells will you know get hit as well but not nearly at the rate um, of regular chemotherapy where it's pretty much just a, a blanket and it's just going to cover all cells targeted therapy is exactly that it targets the cancer cells within the tumor um, uh, it targets those mutations tries to eliminate that you know while still maintaining the good cells or the healthy cells in the body. How do they do the test? It's just a simple blood test. It's uh, you know, to uh, a lavender top tube, which is going to be for. Uh, Did you mention a lavender and a yellow? The the lavender is going to be for the DNA. The serum will be, excuse me, for the RNA uh, side. Um, it's really simple. My mom did go to the same. Uh, cancer center and they actually a month before she passed they were able to do a um, a kit on her the same kit as well same test um, obviously hers were more geared toward like the esophageal um, that's what she said right it was more towards esophageal and GI that's kind of what leaves her kind of scratching her head too is because her mother's genetic testing was all negative yeah right? it came back all negative which you know, usually if her mother's was positive for certain genes, and it kind of it would give her more clues as to you know what type of mutations possibly might she have. But since her mom's was negative, it's kind of difficult. It kind of it leaves more pieces to the puzzle that you need to kind of solve yourself. Um, and that's kind of the role of the geneticist to kind of figure out well how come this is happening, what's the reason. She essentially basically picks the lineup of mutations lets the doctors and, and the, or the team, the cancer team know, well, more than likely, this possibly could be the cause. This is the reason why, but right now it's kind of difficult because, you know, she kind of wasn't able to provide a, a complete family tree, so that leaves gaps. Um, a lot of the cancers are sporadic. There's not really uh, one type of cancer throughout the entire family. You have like colorectal cancer, esophageal. And that's what, and I think that's what was confusing her was after I told her all the cancers that were in my family, she was still kind of like, but it, they're all different cancers. They weren't all the same. The only people that had the same, kind of the same, was me and my uncle, which, you know, that's the only thing. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. So we're gonna, I think we're gonna send out the kit on Thursday. Um, so we'll... It usually takes know. two to three weeks to get results back. Since this is genetic testing, it takes a little longer than a normal lab test. And but then um, next we'll be talking about what happened at my uh, radiology, or not radiology, radiation uh, consultation. Thing in your 